Hi. Apart from learning in the books, we aim students to be able to do things on their own to understand the theories apply in the daily life. So in every faculty, we try to do learning by doing education. But at the same time, as a business school, it is pretty difficult to let everyone know about business and learn and do it. So our mission is, as a business school, how can we provide management and business knowledge to the students? So in 2015, we established this program called Chulangan Business School Innovative Business Online, or what we call CBS IBO. CBS IBO, IBO, well, etc. And I guess you may not hear about it before because so far we just open for internal use for only in Thai, in Chulangan University. So in the beginning, we started from 10 courses. Each course is length for three hours. So we have four direction, sorry, four division, marketing, finance, accounting, and statistics and data. So all of these subjects are about introduction to business. We will not teach any advanced um, knowledge, but we will just want non-business students to understand business and to, you know, well, just learn how to start a business. So that is just our mission. Some courses, well, the students are obliged to take all the 10 courses. They will not choose, but they can choose to learn which subject before another subject, but they need to buy it and it's a bunch. So how are we gonna do this? Well, this is what our courses look like. At first, we do not have time to invest in the system, so we use the Blackboard. This is from the Blackboard University software. This is the introduction, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. Each subject is lengthened for three hours, but because students can lose uh, concentration very easily, so we try to limit the length of the clip within 10 minutes. So I think in one subject, we have 15 to 20 clips. But not only about professors, we also have one clip that we encourage professors to interview business person. So some of them are the CEO of the big company and we share and we post that on our website as well. Well, normally uh, it will look like this. This is professor slide and this is a professor standing here. So we um, outsource the production system to the company. When the student complete each clip video, they need to do the quiz in the multiple choices. We don't have enough TAs or staff to do this so we, and we will not let professors grade this. So it, the easiest one is to just let them choose the choice because the, the knowledge is in, a business, is in the beginning level, it's not that advanced. So for CBS IBO, let me summarize again. The students will learn through the Blackboard system and if they finish all 10 subjects and they finish all the quiz, plus they could pass our exam there are 100 questions, they need to do it within three hours. If they got higher than 65 scores, they will get the certificate. And this is actually what our students want most. Of course, we think that the students want knowledge about you know, business. And we are, we are guess it right, our guess is right. But what we are surprised <laughs> is that a lot of them aim for certificate. One of the well, frequently asked questions is how can I get certificate when is exam? All of them are about that. And yeah, they pass exam to receive the certificate and the registration fee. So we did not open it for free since the beginning, but we charged them for 3,000 baht. It's not too, I think it's not too expensive, you know, if you, sorry, by the business school professor. Uh, well, it's just like buying a books or just having a buffet and you can learn things and you got certificate, right? The distance free is 3,000 baht. What differentiates us from Coursera is Coursera, you have only two or three months to learn. But for our school, we the, the students can learn as long as they are true last student. So if they are a second year student, they have two years to learn. If they are fourth year student, they have just only one year to learn, for example. So this is how we calculate it. Uh, because we rely on the Blackboard system. So after the students graduate, they cannot use it automatically. But, no, well, even though they have 
many years to study it, but they have only one chance to take exam. If they fail the exam, they need to pay 300 baht extra to take exam again. And yeah, this is what they really want. <laughs> Excited to get it, the certificate of achievement after they complete the courses. And why the students want it? Because I will show you later the number, but most, because all of the students are non-business students. When they go to find a job, they want to tell their boss that, okay, they understand something about business. So this is like a proof of them that they are, you know, active students. So two years ago, when we launched uh, the course, the first batch, we, can re we could recruit 311 students. Well, compared to 40,000 students in the school, this number is pretty small, but we think it is pretty huge success. 75% of the students are undergraduate, and you can see here, the highest faculty students that apply most are the faculty of engineering students. Their purpose is they want to run a business in the soon, in the near future, and they have no idea how to do this. Next is the faculty of arts. This became the second highest one because they want to apply the job in the private company. And well, if they know only English or only the language knowledge, it would not, it would not be differentiate them from other applicants. So after the first year, when we market this program, we try to tell them about the job opportunities more. That's how we communicate it. So we open this course for, well, we open the application period for two times a year, twice a year. So in the second year, we open twice, the second batch and the third batch here. I think we got around the same number, 300 something. The fourth year and the fifth year, we didn't do a lot of top marketing that much. We just do only online marketing, online banner a little bit, so the number just dropped a little bit. Uh, but I think that's because most of the students already applied. But right now, there are a lot of students sending a message to me to ask when will you open the application because they were told from their friends that they got certificate. And you know, when they got certificate, what students do is they post it on Facebook. And it's just become the viral, we don't, we don't need to pay anything. So. Well, this is what the business school faculty are very happy about. But for next steps, so far we just opened this for non-business students. But the next step, right now what we are doing from this year, no sorry, from last year is we also use this course for CBS students, for the first year student as the subject, as in the subject of introduction to business course. But in normal school, when we need to teach in one semester, there must be 14 times, right? 14 classes, but we have only 10 classes. So we also produce new four subjects, operation management, ethics, supply chain, IT for management, but again, in the very fundamental level. So our faculty staff did not need to take turn to teach introduction to business anymore. All of them, okay, we have only one professor so in charge in this subject, she just come and introduce the student, students about the Blackboard system and, and afterwards, we, you know, they just study online, learn on their pace. And then in the midterm exam, and afterwards, they log in and uh, study other subjects. So totally, in total, 14 subjects. And now we aim to produce new subjects for 10 new subjects per year. So this is, yeah. This is for CBS students, and we also launch another free model. This is only program for free for non for CU staff for Chula staff. So to Chula Long Kong University staff can also apply in this program and learn as well. But if they need certificate, they need to pay three thousand baht as well. The second one that we received a lot of requests is, of course, we plan to open for individuals for anyone. Uh, within this year. By the end of this year, we plan to open it. And right now, we are making the website and upload our video, all the video, all the quiz and exams on the website, but it's still under construction. Um, before we launch the website, we calculate and we try to do a lot of, we try to think a lot about the financial model. How can we charge people? We even ask them, okay, how much are you willing to pay? We launched 400 surveys and asked people. What surprised us is that a lot of comments say, 
you should not charge us. You are too large. You you are you're a university. You are you know nonprofit organization. How dare you charge us? You know some comments are very harsh. So, well to be in well to, to be frank, at first we plan to charge you know five thousand baht, ten thousand baht because we want to increase the price, charge them higher than students. But when we see the comments like this, we stop that plan. So our new strategy is we're going exactly what David just shared with us. We're going to use the freemium model. We are going to open. We will let uh, the individuals choose two subjects from five subjects that we're going to open for free. And we want to collect the data, the mail address. And then if they finish two subjects, we encourage them to take other eight subjects and got certificate. If they want that, pay for it. So, yeah, that's a you know way of business school people think, kind of thinking. But at the same time, we also differentiate other money collection model. 14 subjects or 10 subjects may be too many for uh, individuals. So we would divide into other three mini models, like um, intensive course about marketing, because we have three subjects about marketing, intensive course about finance, intensive course about um, accounting, for example. But we still haven't finalized about the pricing model yet. But that is what we plan. And for the third one, for the corporate, and this also received a lot of attention from the companies because right now, from the HR perspective, it is so difficult to have, you know, to gather 20 or 100 employees together in the hotel and have the seminars. So, well, our salesperson, which is the dean, is now <laughs> approaching a lot of business and sell them. And right now, we got one customer who are who are very very. Uh, aggressive in you know wanting the knowledge from us and we just open the website and platform for Tesco Lotus. So this is what we have learned and what we've got within these two years. So lesson learned, we started from non customers, the non business students who never interested in business or who barely understand what is business about. But we also exchange from non-business students to our own faculty students. For existing customers, business students, we use it as a blended learning, as a fundamental. And this January, sorry I missed this, we just use this 14 subjects as a fundamental course for MBA students as well. In Thai we call Prapun right? the fundamental business course. So the MBA students learn it as well. And it's useful for them. So when we open this, every time I market this course, we create, we got a new demand from new group of customers. For example, the alumni also want to learn this as well. The friends of Chula students want to learn it as well. Some students from either, either university want to take our courses because, again, they want to certificate from Chula. The problems or the challenges that we have considered or encountered is well, the largest problem, which you might not expect it, is the operation bottleneck. Um, it takes a lot of time to make appointment with professor, to ask professor to do a PowerPoint, to record the video, <laughs> and then to give an exam. So, you know, as a, well, I'm teaching marketing. To recruit a new customers are super easy, but to make a supply is totally, totally challenging for us. So, well, if you have any tips, please, <laughs> please share with me. <laughs> uh, another thing is about the responsive feedback. When the students have a questions right now, they need to post on the web board or website. But, well, um, I have other things to do as well, and I could not reply them in time. And we do not have a good quality of TA yet. So this is another problem. I'm not sure about the, core in the university in Korea because this seems very active about that. But for Chula, to be friendly, our response is super slow. And when there are some questions on the website, I or my staff need to ask the professor who is in charge again. So it's like it takes seven days or 14 days until we can get you know, the answer from a very busy professor and post it online as well. Yeah, so I think um, in the next step, moving forward, so we start from non-business students, 
go to CBA st students. I think the pattern is very interesting. We go outside and then come back inside again to CBA students, both MBA and undergrad students. Then we disperse the knowledge to faculty staff. And in the near future, of course, we're going to uh, launch this program to individuals, including CU alumni, Chula alumni, and other individuals as well. Um, in the near future, we plan to launch new courses. The courses will not be three hours anymore because we know that a lot of people don't have time. They'll be very, very busy. So we plan to do fundamental course for three hours per subject, but we have some courses which we call current issues what is new in the topic, so it must be fast, it must be very quickly produced, it will be one hour length, which is still pretty long for me, but that's what, you know, our meeting result. So we plan to do some marketing and PR further, strengthen it, not only just do Facebook, but to other offline, online as well. And another big um, bottleneck for us, the blackboard system can be used only for university students. So right now we are trying to improve the website, create a new website, upload everything to be very user friendly. The user interface must be good and we plan to do this, uh, to finish this within October. Yeah, thank you very much and I think you're welcome for the questions. Very interesting. Do we have some questions, comments? Uh, comments? Regarding your pricing, and you said you surveyed students asking them how much you're willing to pay. Um, have you ever done actual split testing? Because um, for my for my online business, where I also sell I also sell a premium version on my website. Here's what's interesting: everyone says it should be free, and if it's not free, they always say the purchase only is cheaper. But when they're not surveyed, what I did was what we call split testing, where every new member um, from, the, from the web comes to my website, they are randomly directed to one of three sales pages. Mm -hmm. One was expensive, well, which is my current price, $97 a month for membership to my premium courses. One was $67, and the other is $47. Mm -hmm. And here's what's interesting. It followed linearly, almost perfectly, the economic theory of supply and demand, but it was opposite. I had more sign-ups at 97, less sign-ups at 67, and even less sign-ups at 47. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the higher price, you know, if you if survey them and say, are you going to pay a high price? It's no. Will you pay, will you enroll, are you more likely to enroll if it's cheaper? Yes. But when you actually test it, and they, they don't know they're being surveyed, and they don't know that there are different alternatives, what came out was, I had a much higher sign up rate at the high, at the expensive price, for whatever reason. So split testing is a very good way, and here's what's interesting, you can do split testing for free. Um, you simply tell your, your web developer, or web designer, to use Google Optimizer, I think, they changed it Google, or I think they changed the name now to Google Experiment, and you simply install it into your website, and you make three, two different pages, whatever, how many variations you want. And every, it's a bit technical, and by the way, I'm not a technical guy, I have, I have this done by my, by my uh, web designer as well. They just install some kind of code. And then it, it's active, it's active. The only risk is some people will get angry because they say, hey, I just discovered, I signed up at 97, I discovered my friend signed up at 47. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, just, just let sign them up 97, sign up at 47. Then the 97 guy, you say, congratulations. You know, two days later, congratulations, we're going to give you a $50 discount. Mm -hmm. you know, so he'll even be happy and love you for it. So you can still, in the end, give them all the same price. Mm -hmm. But just to test, just or if somebody complains, you say, okay, fine, I'll give you $50. No problem, a $50 um, refund. But the uh, uh, interesting thing is when you use split testing, can find out the actual behavior signs. It doesn't have to be about price, it can be your headline, for example. Get your certificate now might convert better, might have higher sales than learn more, than, than, than enrich your life. Or a black background might have higher sign-ups than, um, for example, a yellow background, or, or, or a pink background, true or lumpur likes to use the color thing. Or, um, well, of course, maybe not for true or university, but for a, for a, you know, if your website's not connected to a, a university, 
a sexy model, for example, might have a higher conversion rate than a cute model. Or a female model or a male model might have a, create a higher sales rate, sign up rate than a female model. If things like this. And, and think about split testing, it's continuous. It's not, you don't just test the price. It's once you find out this is better, then you create two more permutations, more and more and more. And if you can increase your, let's say, sign up rate or payment rate from, say, 2% to 4%, it doesn't sound much. But, you know, for, let's say, um, let's say a for profit website, instead of earning 200,000, bottom month in profit, suddenly you're earning 400,000 bottom month. Just by pushing it a little bit higher, 2%, you know, do the split testing. So if I may suggest split testing, you can Google it and you can Google, you can Google the word Google experiments. It is free. Very it's interesting. Free. Yeah. I think maybe the higher price refer to the more credibility and the more trusted the learner would gain or expect from to learn from you. It could be, and it could also be that um, they're, they're not as willing to go through the hassle of typing out their credit card enrollment for, for something which costs small. Mm -hmm. Could be. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Any other uh, questions, comments? Because I'm, I'm very excited about the uh, future of this. I think that's huge for them. It's a wonderful opportunity. Yes. Yeah. I just have to, to issue with two, two comments here. The first one is about the pricing issue as well. Like, uh, when it comes in Australia, there is an increment uh, uh, a strategy yeah, to, to, to charge the fee for the students. Like, if they complete three courses, they'll get the certificate. Five courses, they'll get the diploma. So they call it pay as you go. <laughs> I don't know, that made people feel better about what they have to pay. The, the other thing is, uh, I think, your faculty is quite smart in partnering or, or working with the business uh, people, business organizations. Because right now I'm working at the University of Westminster in, in the UK. Let's be fine. <laughs> but um, when I first joined, they made all the new faculty members, new staff, to do the online kind of like courses that they offer through Mac Blackboard as well. Mm -hmm. And it's compulsory. If you don't complete the course, you won't get the salary for the following year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, those are my courses uh, that the uh, university faculty will have to take. You'll be surprised to hear this. They, they make us do things like how to spot check the students who could potentially be the terrorists and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know whether I can give you the secret of the university. But you know, all those kind of things uh, will be possibly useful to all of us. Thank you so much for sharing the knowledge. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, thank you very much. make it a little more convenient for everyone. Thank you very much. Our, our next speaker is Professor Yamada Suniyo from the Open University of Japan, and he will be speaking to us on learning analytics and IMS standards using JMOOC case.